Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. We're looking at the country of Nigeria particularly its capital city, Abuja, one of the most dynamic, larger cities on the African continent. And we're looking at a very critical problem concerning the shortage of electrical power and the use of very dirty diesel fuel. We have a gentleman who's actually working on a project with the ATV, the African Technology Village, to correct this issue. They're using a number of leading edge green technologies, and that's why they're being featured on the Emerald Planet TV to share these technologies world over. This is Edongset Nekarim. He's the CEO of Magnific Limited in Abuja. Uh, Edong, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we're glad to have you here from the African continent the country of Nigeria and the very beautiful city of Abuja. But tell us about your company, Magnific. Uh, Magnific was founded in the year 2009 when the power sector in Nigeria was privatized. And uh, the mandate of Magnific is to provide 247 uninterrupted power supply in Nigeria, uh, starting from Abuja, the federal capital territory. I think it's absolutely wonderful what you're doing and the mix of uh, green technologies, which we'll be talking about, is absolutely marvelous. Tell us a little bit about your collaborators, the African Technology Village, and then also Africa Kilowatt Holdings. How do you work with these two organizations to bring about a profound change in the provision of renewable energy to Abuja and eventually to Nigeria itself? Yeah, thank you very much. Ah, Abuja Technology Village uh, was set up in 2007 as a free zone to bring in industries that would serve as economic boosters for Nigeria. So it is in that regard that Abuja Technology Village opened a competitive bid and then we applied to provide Abuja City with a smart grid system. And then when we were selected as the preferred bidders, we now invited Africa Kilowatt um, USA to be part of this great venture. So Africa Kilowatt Abuja Technology Village are in partnership with us to ensure that we succeed in this regard. I think it's absolutely wonderful. You have this uh, very uh, wonderful collaborative effort going on. You're introducing uh, very leading edge technologies uh, into Abuja, Nigeria, which can be examples for the African continent. But looking at the map of the world, Africa for the first time is actually front and center as far as the official maps are concerned. It's been properly sized for the first time in uh, you know, a millennia. Why is Africa becoming so important? Africa right now is the center point of the world because Africa has benefited immensely from the other parts of the world, especially the Western countries. So it is right now, uh, the time is ripe for Africa to give back to the rest of the world, what it has benefited from the rest of the world. So I believe that Africa should begin to make concerted efforts in trying to ensure that they begin to tell their stories and also give back to the rest of the world. Yeah, and it has a powerful narrative because of 54 nations, a uh, huge natural resource base, very energetic people. 
Uh, it's just amazing what you have to offer to the world. But looking at Nigeria, why is Nigeria so important as far as Africa itself concerned? And give us a, a kind of a small snapshot of Nigeria as far as population, diversity, and its importance. Yeah, Nigeria is a country that is endowed with so much resources and about 200 and uh, something ethnic groups and um, religious groups, uh, I mean, languages and all that. And then we have three major religions, uh, which is the Muslim, Christianity, and other religions. And if you look at Nigeria, as it were, uh, because of its ethnic diversity with over 200 million people, you realize that Nigeria is actually a mini Africa. If Nigeria gets it right, it means that the rest of the world or the rest of Africa will also get it right. So Nigeria is very important for the continent of Africa. And actually, you were correct. If Nigeria gets it right, you really will have a direct impact on the world because you'll be influencing the other 53 nations on the African continent. Uh, and that's extremely important. And we don't really want to understate that. But looking at the number of states that you have uh, throughout Nigeria, each of these represent a great diversity as far as languages, uh, peoples, economies, natural resources. How does that diversity really help to propel Nigeria through the 21st century? Yeah, the potential that each and every state in Nigeria has is enormous, both in terms of human resources, in terms of capital resources, and uh, in terms of other resources. If you look at Nigeria as it were, we have states that are endowed with diamond, gold, while some are also endowed with crude oil and all that. So if you harness these resources, both the human resources, the human capital, and also the natural resources, you know, and then bring them together to the center point, you realize that Nigeria would achieve so much, you know. So I think the best time to do that is now. I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, but it has a challenge, and this is something I laid out in the very beginning as far as the electrical power, because the two things that every country, every people, even every community needs today, of course, water is number one, water is life. Uh, secondly is electrical power, because the world is running on electrical power. So we have this photograph here, Edong. What does this actually tell us about the state of uh, having access to electrical energy in Abuja, but also in Nigeria itself. Yeah, if you look at this picture, you realize that everything is disjointed and entangled in an unstructured manner. It's a typical reflection of what is currently happening in Nigeria's power sector. Uh, until the sector is restructured to capture the present needs and the present exigencies, we would also be seeing this kind of picture and that is the present reality. Yeah, I tell you, this, this really is a challenge. Uh, look at all this wiring spaghetti uh, on these uh, poles, and you really do see this as you drive uh, throughout the country. Uh, but going to the other major challenge, of course, a majority of your electricity is generated through these very dirty fossil fuel burning uh, power generators. Uh, tell us about those, and why is that something that is no longer accepted in Abuja or in Nigeria, and we must move way beyond these if uh, Nigeria, Abuja, and even the African continent is going to progress and have its true position in the world economy in the 21st century. Absolutely. There's no viable infrastructure without electricity. So if you look at this, companies have to survive. They have to make money. They have to do business. They have to continue being, I mean, in, in business. So they rely on generators. They have to self generate electricity for themselves. And it affects their balance sheet. As a matter of fact, they spend between 30 to 40 cents per kilowatt hour, which is far outrageous. And it impacts negatively on the, their balance sheet. So it's not clean energy, they, the cost of maintenance, maintenance uh, the cost of I mean, the noise pollution and several other costs. So if you aggregate these costs together, you realize that they are actually disadvantaged. So we must eliminate this. The brownouts and the, the smogs must be totally eradicated. Yeah, and also when we're talking about businesses, the, the hospitals, the government offices, the universities, the K through 12 schools, they all have to put up with these same types of generators. So it really is pervasive across the whole society 
not just businesses itself. And that's something we want to make very clear is that every citizen in Nigeria is faced with this. But also, even if you produce electricity, uh, you just can't transmit it uh, across the city or even down the street because of the, what we're seeing here. So these fires, what are these emblematic of as far as the electrical uh, service or the lack of electrical service in Abuja? Yeah, what causes this is basically the transmission capacity is not sufficient to carry the generating capacity that Nigeria has. The distribution capacity is also not sufficient to carry the generation capacity. So a lot of times when the generators want to transmit power into the distribution lines or the transmission lines that it were, you begin to have sparks because it's basically overloading the weak transmission lines. So until the transmission lines and distribution lines are totally refurbished, are revamped, we would continue to have this kind of crisis. Yeah, so it's a generation. This is really what you're looking at as far as the grid uh, and the generation capacity in Abuja and most of Nigeria is sitting under this shed right here. All these generators are lined up, ready to go to work uh, when the, there's a roving brownout, as they call it. So it really is a challenge uh, to... Uh, keep the businesses, the schools, the hospitals, uh, the nonprofit organizations, all of these on. But this is something that you see as you travel around uh, Busha. So every citizen is really faced with this. Is this correct, Edong? Absolutely. Every Nigeria self generates. Every Nigerian self generates. Um, out of every 10 Nigerians, it depends on generator. I, I would say just the maybe the government institutions and all that but even at that they also use generators so and then of course it has all the disadvantages that you can think of you know from they are susceptible to fire outbreaks we've had several fire outbreaks we, we've had people inhaling uh, generator fuel and dying families dying because of all this and i believe the time is ripe now to eliminate all this yeah i think that's very important but yet there's been a huge investment as far as uh, power generation, distribution uh, in Abuja across Nigeria. Uh, but again, it's just it's just staggering uh, the amount of investment, but yet the lack of uh, reliant energy across the whole society. Yeah, if you look at this uh, image here, you realize that despite the huge investment over the years in the, in the power sector, nothing, Nigeria's power sector has not increased beyond 5,000 megawatts. And that is because the structure as presently constituted is has not solved the problem. So we have to go back to the basics and restructure the power sector and then realign the various stakeholders in the value chain so that Nigerians will begin to enjoy the dividend of privatization. Yeah. So we're faced with uh, power outages. Uh, we have faulty circuits uh, facing uh, everything that's going on. So how is this collaboration working right now to change this and you have about 30 seconds to do that Edong. 30 seconds this collaboration is very important uh, to abuja because it's going to give power directly to who needs it the most and then free up the grid to other end users so we've decided that we are going to aggregate the industries first and provide them with power and then free up the grid to accommodate residential areas also so that everybody collectively would have steady power supply I think it's absolutely fantastic. And this is Edong Karinet, uh, the CEO of Magnificent in Abuja, Nigeria. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet.